how's everybody doing today? I am your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CEO of Valio Pharma, Steve Saviak. How are you doing today, Steve? Very good. Thanks for having me, Rich. Thank you for joining us. Very excited to have you on the show. Your, been, your, your company has been a huge success for our community already. Thank you for that. And we're really excited about learning more directly from the CEO. Why don't we get started right away, Steve, and you can tell us a little bit about Valio Pharma and how long you've been with the company. Uh, Valio was created in 2003. I, I co-founded uh, the company with a couple other uh, ex-pharma executives. So it's been around uh, this year, we celebrated our 17th anniversary. Uh, it's had, uh, you know, over the 17 years, we've had kind of what some people refer to as Valio 1.0, Valio 2.0. For the first uh, period of until about 2014, 2015, uh, we, we uh, in licensed a number of drugs. We had a very successful business. But in 2014, we sold our products to Valiant, which is now Bosch Health. Um, we had an extensive dermatology portfolio. They were very interested in that. So we sold uh, those products as well as our hospital business. So we sold the products, not the company. We kept the, the name. We kept the same core management team uh, and basically launched uh, what I like to refer to as Value 2.0, which is new therapeutic areas. So new areas of, of disease uh, in terms of whether it be neurology diseases or uh, oncology, or again, back in the hospital. So those are our three areas that we currently focus on. So it's been a, a very uh, exciting uh, time for us over the last 17 years. And I think the future uh, bodes well also. I do too. I love what you guys are doing. And does Value Pharma have any main competitors? And if so, who are they? Uh, the pharmaceutical industry, as you know, in, in the world or specifically in Canada, because we're a Canadian focused company, has many, uh, there are many pharmaceutical uh, providers and that ranges all uh, from the top of the, the Pfizer's and the Merck's um, and the you know GSK and what have you, the, the bigger companies down to smaller companies uh, such as us. I would put us in a, uh, we're, I would say we're on a, we're a small tier moving to mid tier. Um, uh, based on the revenues that we're starting to see happen, based on our growing uh, uh, number of employees. So we would be, I would, in our peer group, as, as far as public companies uh, are concerned that some of your viewers may uh, be aware of, I would look at companies like HLS. I would look at companies like Knight Therapeutics, uh, Medexis, which is starting to do very well now. That would be another company we would be a sort of peered uh, to. So those are, are probably the three that I think most closely resemble not only our business model, but uh, certain other aspects of our operations. Uh, but what separates us from these companies uh, is a number of factors, but one in, in uh, particular is we don't all go after the same disease states or what we call same therapeutic areas. So some companies might want to focus on cardiology or on women's health. Uh, so our focus, again, is on neurology, oncology, and uh, the hospital. So there is a little bit of overlap with, uh, with these companies, but uh, there's also probably a lot of positive interaction that we have with them because in many case times, we're not competing. We're actually exchanging information. Now, you mentioned that you guys are going from small tier to mid tier. So how soon can we expect to see revenues impact Value Pharma's financial results? Well, our revenues for uh, have been growing ever since the, the rebirth of the company following the sale to Valiant. Our uh, revenues for our last fiscal year were in excess of $8 million. Uh, our fiscal year ends October 31st. So that's the year end that just finished a couple of, uh, you know, a month and a bit ago. Uh, this year, our 21 year, we expect revenues in the 20 to 25 million range, over 100% increase. So wow. we're starting to see the, the increase in revenues based on organic growth of our existing products and the addition of, well, we had four products launched in the last quarter of 20 uh, of our fiscal 20 years. So that was, that's, they had a little bit of impact in 20. We'll see more impact in 21. And this year where we see the big growth is in two specific products, Redesca, which was, we announced, we uh, just received approval yesterday from Health Canada. Uh, and the other product is Hisperco, which is our uh, uh, immune support product. It's our first over-the-counter product, uh, which has been launch, uh, launched about a month ago and will be in major retailers across Canada within the next month or so. 
That's great. Now, you just recently, and you mentioned this, had some big news, which we talked about yesterday, from Health Canada on the approval of Redesca. Congratulations. A huge. And how yeah. big is the heparin market and how much of it can Redesca target? So the uh, so Redesca is is what's known as a biosimilar. It's a very it's a it means it's biologically similar to a biologic drug. Uh, the low molecular weight heparin market in Canada is about two hundred million dollars. Now, when we talk about low molecular weight heparins, what do they do? They're essentially anticoagulants. In more simplistic terms, they're blood thinners. They prevent blood clots from forming. Uh, they're used predominantly in the hospital. Uh, they're used after many types of surgeries, and you can imagine things such as a knee implant, hip implant, uh, cardiac surgery. Anytime you're, you've had surgery and you're bedridden in the, and you're bedridden in the hospital, uh, what physicians are concerned about is the creation of blood clots in your extremities, your arms, your legs. And if these blood clots migrate to your lungs, you have uh, very serious consequences and potentially fatal consequences. So the way this is regulated is through the use of heparin. So it's a very, it's used every day. And that's why the market in, in all hospitals across Canada, I don't think there's a hospital in Canada that does not have low molecular weight heparin of some type in its, uh, in its pharmacy. Uh, and as I mentioned, the, the market is about $200 million. How, what percentage of that market we expect to attain is about 15 to 20%. We think we have a, an excellent product. We have an excellent uh, source of supply, and that's not to be overlooked in the heparin market where there are shortages from time to time. We have a very convincing clinical package, which differentiates us. And we have a complete lineup of the products from, um, I think there's eight different stock keeping units. So eight different formats that are being offered, which is the full range that's typically available in Canada. So those factors give us a strong sense that we will be able to achieve that market share. And what, uh, without getting into too much detail uh, about biosimilars and what have you, biosimilars in Canada are being introduced and essentially in various, against uh, various drugs. Remicade is a biologic that biosimilars have been used, uh, have been launched against. Uh, and what uh, biosimilars have done in Canada is have driven down the costs of healthcare. This is one of the big advantages of a biosimilar is the savings that they provide the healthcare system. And the provinces are actually looking at, uh, it started in BC and is moving east, actually mandating the use of biosimilars. That also is a benefit to us. So we're coming in with a great product, great clinical package, lower price than the, let's say the competition, still provides very attractive margins to us. So it's a win-win for the patient, for us, and for the Canadian healthcare system. Now you mentioned this a little bit, what are the peak sales for the product? I think you said, uh, out of a 200 million market, 15 to 20%, that's 30 to $40 million. That's pretty that's substantial. Um, and how quickly can we see it get there? You know, when people ask that question often, because we have uh, currently we're marketing eight products and we have seven more in the pipeline of which Redesca is one of them. And they say, how quickly do you get to peak sales? And peak sales is how many pharma companies like to look at their products. How big can this product get in, in the Canadian market or whatever market they're, they're talking about. And that varies dep depending on the type of product, but specifically for a product like Redesca, you're looking at peak sales within 18, 24 months uh, from launch. OnStrive, which is our Parkinson's drug, which was launched in July, 2019, peak sales will come through at probably in year four or year five. So it, it, there's a lot of known factors that, that affect when peak sales typically can be uh, achieved. Uh, but uh, fortunately for us, Redesca is on the shorter end of that. So we should start seeing sales uh, hitting our financial statements in the first half of, uh, of our of 19, of, uh, 2021, sorry. Wow, that's impressive. That's exciting, guys. So for early investors that wanna get in early, that is going to be a huge jump in revenue for the company. How does Redesca differentiate itself from the competition? Well, again, the, the difference, it, it, there's the differentiation in terms of its effectiveness is, is, uh, is not how you have to look at Redesca. How it differentiates itself from the competition is its breadth of product. So the number, the various um, the formats it comes in, uh, the, its clinical package. So it has a very, it's, it's been tested um, uh, over, it's been in the market in other countries for over eight years. In Europe alone, 
uh, over 150 man days of use of, of Redesca. So for instance, so for every day a patient is taking Redesca is considered one man day. In Europe, 150 man days, very, very low or very, uh, safe, uh, very good safety profile, low incidence of adverse events. So these are some of the advantages that will be uh, marketed to the hospitals across Canada. So very safe product, very good quality. Uh, and the, clearly the big advantage too is, is a price savings for hospitals. And that price saving will range anywhere from 10 to maybe 20, 25%. So, uh, you know, big, when you're looking at a $200 million market for hospitals, these are big savings. Absolutely. And what can we expect from the company short and midterm? In terms of our, our short-term drivers, what people will uh, hear about from Valio is certainly the growing revenue. We'll start to maybe hear about some other products that we're currently working on in licensing into the into the company. But in the short term, it's really the news will be around Redesca and its ultimate launch and some of the early successes we have in the in attaining a market share. The other product that's gaining a lot of, uh, of, uh, of attention now is a product we launched uh, about a month ago, uh, which is called Hisperco. And Hisperco is our first product, which is an over-the-counter product. So it's available in pharmacies without a prescription. It's used for immune uh, support. So immune, when you look at immune support, you're looking at, well, what, what does that necessarily mean? It helps your immune system um, combat viral infections. So you're, we're, you know, viral infections is the flu. The common flu is a viral uh, virus that infects your body. Um, so you can imagine with this current pandemic situation that our immune systems are being uh, attacked uh, and, and need the maximum amount of support. There's a lot of scientific data that, that supports that this product or the Hesperidine, which is the active ingredient in Hesperco, um, has shown effectiveness at controlling symptoms of a number of different viruses, including the coronavirus. Now, when I say coronavirus, I'm not talking necessarily COVID-19, although there will be some clinical uh, activity we'll be performing to try to show that. But a number of the, the common flus that we get in the, in the fall time or springtime are coronaviruses. I mean, th this is a virus family that's been around for quite some time. So there's been s specific science that shows that it, it reduces the symptoms of these viral inf infections or these. So I think this is very important for people to take. It's a, it's a very low cost, about a dollar a day, We're currently available on amazon.ca, uh, soon to be available in, in all major uh, pharmacy retailers across Canada. And when I say soon, probably the beginning of next year. So two, three weeks, uh, and you'll, uh, and our intention is to go into the U.S. with this product. So again, good margin product, uh, very effect, uh, very effective on the cost per day. Uh, we think that all, uh, you know, all patients uh, should, all, all Canadians should be on this. I, in fact, everyone who works for Valio takes Hesperico and we don't get it for free. We have to buy it from the company. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, we, we feel very strongly about it. And anyone who wants to to know more about it can certainly contact me or visit a website from our partner. Our partner is called Ingenue Pharma. When I say a partner, it's a small biotech company in Montreal that developed the concept around asperidine that dug out some of this scientific data that supports the activity of, uh, of asperidine. Um, go to their website and you can read uh, as much as you want to read, but it's, it's really compelling. Uh, and I strongly encourage anyone that, you know, may feel run down or is, is, is maybe concerned about uh, catching uh, about some type of viral uh, infection uh, to uh, to take uh, Hesperico. We've got investors from over 90 countries that are going to be watching this video, learning about Valio Pharma. If there's one thing you want to take away, you want them to take away from this interview, what would it be? I would say that our, uh, the, you know, the two things are growing portfolio growing revenues. We're a fast growing company. And I think that, you know, for growth investors, you're always looking at that top line growth. And that's what we're demonstrating. We demonstrated it in the fourth quarter and we'll be demonstrating it in fiscal uh, 2021. So I think that if it is one thing is that growth and that anticipated continued growth over really the next three, four years as we plan out um, bodes well for, for the company, for Canadian uh, healthcare system and for our shareholders. What is the best way for shareholders 
or potential investors to get in contact with the company if they want to get in touch with the company? Uh, well, I would say to get a hold of me, and and probably the easiest way is not by phone uh, because it's just a too uh, uh, it's just so so difficult. But I would say to email me, and I'll uh, if I can't answer your questions, I can. We have a director of. Uh, of communications, uh, Fred Dumay, who uh, deals with investors and various uh, institutions and uh, analysts and what have you on a daily basis. But certainly send me an email. Uh, it's my last name, Saviak at valiopharma.com, and I'll be happy to answer personally or I'll get someone else to, to contact you. That's great. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Steve Saviak, the CEO of Valio Pharma. Now, remember, guys, Rich TV Live is strictly for education and entertainment purposes. Always do your due diligence. Always do your research before you invest in anything we talk about on Rich TV Live. Speak to a financial advisor. If you do, they're probably going to rec recommend Valio Pharma. I recommend it. I think it's undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. It's already been a winner for our community. If you guys are watching this video for the first time, smash the like button, comment down below, subscribe, and share the video everywhere. I think Value Pharma has been a big winner for our community, and I believe this is a story that's just getting started. Steve, thank you for joining us on our show. Love to have you on again. And anytime you guys have any big breaking news, we will be watching and following very closely. Rich, thanks for having me, and uh, we'll keep you up to date with all our news. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you guys for watching. If you're not winning, you're not watching. We bring in the winners, and we bring them to you first. Steve Saviak, CEO of Value Pharma. Have a great day, Steve. Keep up the great work. Thank you guys for watching. We'll talk to you soon.